All right, we're back. We're going to be working on our new commander deck. So here's Cost, Eyes of the Glade. A two mana 2-2, two, two, but thanks to the hybrid mana, it's actually a three color commander. Um, so whenever a creature that was turned face up this turn deals combat damage to a player, I draw a card. That's all well and good. Has to be my creature. I kind of glossed over that, but it's the second ability that we actually care about. So the tap turn target face down attacking creature I control face up. So we're going to try and put in some big scary things that we can ambush people with. Uh, so last time we finished on battle for Zendikar. So let's head on back through that. And that brings us to Battle Bond. Believe this works with battle bond yeah we get all of the bonded creatures first so don't need regna don't need akum don't need gorm um knights your team controls have flying and haste dragons your team control have double strike don't think so here don't need blaring recruiter Akram Slinger, Soul Blade Renewer. Uh, plus X plus O where X is the greatest power among tapped creatures your opponents control. White tap, tap target creature. Yeah, it's not really worth it. <clears throat> and Lay Weaver. Alright, so Arena Rector, no. Uh, Aurora Champion. Wait a minute. I didn't see Rowan up here. Where's Rowan hiding? Uh, bright or brightling rather no uh, destroy target creature with power four or greater no creatures your team controls get plus one plus one game of combat on your turn pay four to support two exile all non-land permanents no regnus sanction Each foe chooses one untapped creature they control and taps the rest. Think so. Uh, enters the battlefield, target player gains four life. No. Uh, support two. Choose target creature with a counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return it to its owner's hand. <clears throat> each player on your team may discard a card, then each player discarded a card this way draws a card. Uh, whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, that player copies it and may choose new targets for the copy. Choose a card name. Spells with a chosen name. Yeah, it's not helping. <clears throat> uh, for each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend discards all cards from their hand, then draws that many cards plus one. Deals damage to each foe equal the number of cards in their hand. Battlefield Overlord. No. Alien, no. Gila. Uh, Stadium Vendors. No. Strategy. Bramble Sovereign. No. No. Whenever another warrior enters the battlefield, no. One or more counters on creatures I don't control. Uh, other creatures have, whenever this creature attacks, you may have it fight. Grothama, all devouring. When it leaves the battlefield, each player draws cards equal to the amount of damage dealt to Grothama this turn by sources they controlled. Rothama is an interesting one to um, have face down because it won't have its ability until it's turned face up. So we might be able to just get in a ton of damage with it before it becomes vulnerable to that. But then 
it'll still be face up on the battlefield after that. Equal to the amount of damage dealt to Grothama this turn by sources they control. Oh, Wayfinder. Yeah, I don't think... Like, Grothama's interesting, but it's still... Once it's dealt its 10 damage, it's still kind of just sitting on the battlefield asking to be fought to death. So, probably not. Artifact Enchantment, Instant Sorcery, or Planeswalker? No. Victory Chimes. And then we're through the new cards. I'm kind of curious where it thinks Rowan goes, though. Not listed up there. Is she all the way at the end for some reason? Yep, yeah, okay. I have no idea why, but okay. Oh, gather. So crazy. Alright, so that's Battle Bond. After, oops. Battle Bond comes. Down, Betrayers of Kamigawa. Uh, dies, each player sacrifices a land. No. Next, each combat if able. Each enchantment deals two damage to its controller, then each aura attached to a creature deals two damage to the creature it's attached to. Uh, cunning Bandit. No. Alter, no. Blade Main Baku. No. They exile a red card with mana value X from your hand gives plus X plus O. Yeah, I don't think so. <clears throat> Duke of Pupil, Crack the Earth, Bandit. Prime Memories. Top X cards, put all creature cards, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any... Judgment, no. Blood Hand. Ooh. Um, Bushido X. X is the number of attacking creatures. Creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able. Genjus, Harald Masno, Cohort, Your Spring, Heart of Light, Etsku, Talon Strike. Nope. Uh, don't need in the Web of War. Although that is kind of interesting with um, our commander just being able to put the creature down attack with it immediately and flip it with plus two power. Don't think so. There's going to be some temptation, like there was for the last commander deck that we worked on, to run the haste enablers for the creatures that we're running. Because giving them haste means that we can flip them up uh, that turn. Also, giving haste means that uh, cost can activate the turn he comes down. So, if we had to recast him or something, we have a face down creature that's ready to attack. Better Choji. No. They're dead. These 
Soul Shift X, no. Life Gift, no. Spinner, Loam Dweller. No. Mirror Gallery for anything. Crushing Shoal, Opal Eye. <clears throat> Orb of Dreams, no. Overblaze. I think I need any of the patrons. Uh, creatures you control get plus two plus O. Oh. Whenever a creature attacks, gain one life. Tap to untap all forests and all green creatures. Activate only once each turn. Combat damage, add that much green. No. Summons, no. Sewing salt, no. Splinter. You know. Verdict, no. You and target opponent each gain control of all creatures the other controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste. Sawa. Nope, okay. Nothing fun in Betrayers. Brings us to Born of the Gods, I think, was next. Yep. And back to champions. All right, acolytes reward. No, we're not going to care about any of the heroic stuff because we're not targeting our things. Um, archetype of aggression, courage, and endurance. I think so. Respect of the Hydra, Bolt of Karanos, Brimosno, Corsair, I don't think so. It's battles. Xenagos, five damage, makes two three threes, and destroy all creatures and planeswalkers. Think so. Comes untapped, you may pay red and one. If you do create a token, it's a copy of another target creature, except it's an enchantment in addition to its other types. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. Think so. Spider, no. Dream Finder. Parametra, God of the Harvest. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, search your library for a forest or plains. See him Ravager. Bones, no. Put a 1 1 counter on each of up to three target creatures. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell I control deals damage to an opponent, deals that much damage to a target creature that player controls. Nope. Sands, no. Searing Blood. Temples, Thunder Brute. Smite, no. Grimaz, and Xenagos. Is 
So that was Born of the Gods. That brings us to Champions. Uh, no, no. Here's the battlefield, add red, no. Underminer, no. No. Usa, no. Ben Ben. No. Blood rights, no. Seiju for anything, Gardner, or Grafter, no. think so, Desperate Ritual, Yoka Gardner, players can't cast spell, or can cast spells only during their own turns, nope. I mean, yes, I have all of the I can turn this face up and do a thing, but if it doesn't disrupt the weird combo that somebody has that nobody can interact with now because they can't cast spells on this player's turn, then it's probably not going to work out too well for me. I'm not trying to do a super weird combo kill, or, you know, it doesn't even have to be that weird, I just, you know... Trying to stop players from casting spells on my turn is not as important as letting them be able to cast spells on each other's turn to interact with each other at this point. Um, no. Main Shroud, prevent all combat damage. That would be dealt to equipped creature. Nope. Dodo Bandit Warlord. No. Bandit Lord, I don't think so. I don't need the Earth Kami. Ari. I think I need any of the Hondans. Name, since Kami, nope. Journeyer's kite, no. Joyous respite, Yugen. Kiki, Kodama the North Tree, no, Kodama the South Tree, no, Kodama's Might, shouldn't need Kodama's Reach either, Kodama's Banner isn't particularly good for us, most of our creatures don't have a name, or a creature type. I'm sorry, they don't have a color and they don't have a creature type. The fact that they don't have a name is disruptive to other cards, but not necessarily that one. But yeah, they have no color, they have no creature type, so it's really hard for them to share either with our commander. And colorless is not a color, and the lack of a creature type is not a creature type for them to share. That does not work. I don't need any of the Miosians, plus, you know, putting them in face down means they don't get their counters anyway, so not like we're doing anything great by attempting to bypass. Sound Master, what do you say? You want Sensei's Divining Top because we're pro among other things, we are probably going to be running um there's an enchantment from Fate Reforged, I believe, which lets you manifest the top card of your deck. So 
in addition to my normal fetch land, dual land um, mana base. There's also the value of being able to know what the top card is for those effects, so. Definitely do want uh, Seshiro, no. Shall less Kappa, no. Most of my things aren't legendary. So I don't need the lands that affect legendary creatures. Ooh, excuse me. Or lands I control, no. Hino, no. It's a Godo's Mall. I mean, it's fun to make our commander a 5 5 trampler on turn 4, but I don't think so. Natural speed, no. Umo, Faraway, She's Flame, Storm, Yosai, and Zozu. Nope, okay. So that's Champions. Champions comes Cold Snap, and then all of the Commander sets. Hooray! And yeah, we'll be doing all of the commander sets. All right. We definitely have time for them. Uh, another target creature other than Valkyrie dies this turn. Return to the battlefield under your control. So similar to um, blinking the creatures, if the creature dies and then comes back into play, it comes back face up. So the Adakar Valkyrie does actually work with our face down creatures dying. Turn that card to the battlefield under your control. Huh. I think I forgot that Adakar Valkyrie actually lets you steal your opponent's creatures when they die. I don't know that that's good enough, but maybe. So we need Gold Snap. Is at a car Valkyrie. Yep, okay. It's like right there, but I'm not looking at it, so I'm trying to remember how to spell it. Joel four five. <clears throat> okay, we'll consider the Valkyrie then. <clears throat> Partially because of what it does for us, but also I didn't realize you could steal your opponent's creatures when they died, so that's kind of neat. Do I want Braid of Fire just so I can turn the creature face up naturally? It gives me extra mana on my upkeep to flip a creature that I started the turn with. Probably not. That doesn't seem necessary for this deck. Bioclasm, Field Marshal. Do not need Fury of the Horde. Uh, Hibernation's End. I think so. The North. Can't run Owl Keeper. It's mana three three pseudo lifelink flying. Uh lightning serpent. No. Lightning storm, no. Lubisa, no. Magmatic core. Order of the Sands, no. 
Viper. Actual worm now. Size. Prime Horn Arox. Scale Dragon. Scrying Sheets. Sheltering Ancient. Yeti. Surging cards. Whatever non creature source you control deals damage, you gain that much life. Nope, not what my deck is about at all. Sorry, Tamanoa. Don't need the Wilderness Elemental and Woolly Razorback. Nope, okay. That was Cold Snap. All right, Commander. Okay, so we pop back over here. Yep. White, red, green, and sets are Commander. Twenty eleven. And doing the numbers does not help with this one, so we're just going through it. Um, don't need Acorn Catapult. <clears throat> uh, starting with you, put X11s, no. Uh, don't need Angelic Arbiter, I think. Uh, choose War Peace, no. Cassandra. Players can't cast spells. Flying players can't cast spells during combat. Red target creature attacks this turn if able. Hmm. Don't think so. Avatar of Slaughter is a problem because we can't activate um, cost if he has to attack. Because there won't be a valid target to activate his ability on. So that doesn't really work. Um... Legendary it has hexproof. No, <clears throat> don't need chaos warp. Death by dragons. No, don't need hornet queen. Omnivore. Although Omnivore is funny if we can get it face down onto the battlefield and attack somebody with it who can't block it. And then we get to turn it face up and deal eight to everybody. Uh, don't need Magmatic Force. Don't need Mana Charge Dragon. Martyr's Bond. Reprints. Soul Snare. I think Storm Herd is a reprint. Also, I don't think we actually need it anyway, so. Stranglehold, no. Tribute to the Wild, no. Bows, and that's it. Okay. It's 2011. 2013. I don't think this one has a user. I think it's the next one that has the go set number. Yeah, it just organizes them by color. All right. Uh, enter the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. If you do, its controller gains control of active authority. I think so. Uh, Bane of Progress, no. That's true, we glossed over Command Tower. Which we absolutely need. And, and tower. 
almost never notice Command Tower when going through anymore, but I think that's because I'm, I've am i conditioned myself to ignore Command Tower as I go through each time, so... It's in so many Commander sets, if not all of them. I suppose not all of them, because some of them are monochromatic, so... get Command Tower in those as often. Uh, Curse of Chaos... Um, a discard a card, draw a card, put a 1-1 one, one count on a creature, gain one life. I think I need Darksteel Mutation. Eye of Doom, probably not. Fiery Justice. Uh, whenever a creature attacks one or one of your opponents, or Planeswalker and opponent controls, that creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. Whenever a creature attacks one, or, one of your opponents, or Planeswalker and opponent controls, that creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. No, probably not. Don't need Homeward Path. Wrath Will of the Wild. There's the battlefield with the number of 1 1 counters on equal to the amount of mana spent, so it comes in as a 3 3. Move X 1 1 counters from it, choose one, put X 1 1 counters on target creature, deal X damage to target creature or player, or make an XX green elemental creature token. Uh, for each opponent, gain control of up to one creature that player controls. Untap those creatures, they gain haste. No. Mystic Barrier, no. I a Soul Beast. The one dozen eyes. Primal Vigor. Reprint, reprint with new artwork, don't need restore. Um, blocks exchange its power and the power of target creature it's blocking until end of combat. Spawning grounds, no. Reprints. Sudden Demise. Uh, don't need Tempt with Discovery. Glory. Or Vengeance. Ravager Attacks, where X is the number of lands defending player controls. No. There's a few more cards after. Uh, players can't gain life, which hunt deals four damage to you. Opponent random gains control of it. Whenever a spell or ability causes its controller to shuffle their library, that player puts a card from their hand on top of their library. Nope. Ah, got rid of everything. Red, green. We're on 2013, now we're on 2014. Now the set number should work. Flash Flying enters the battlefield. If you cast it from your hand, exile all attacking creatures. Um, as long as you control your commander, gets plus two, plus two, and has vigilance. Uh, choose an opponent. You and that player each make three 1-1 one, one flyers. Choose an opponent, you gain two life for each creature you control, and they do the same for their creatures. Weapons. Attainment Priest, no. Put X11 one, one soldier tokens onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Destroy all creatures with power greater than target creature's power. Dies get X11s, one, where X is the number of creature cards in my graveyard. 
Josal, don't need Nahiri. Choose two players, source control by one of those players deals damage to the other. Or permanent that player controls that source deals double damage to that player permanent instead. You're ready. Dual caster mage. Sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. So Feldon's kind of interesting if I'm already trying to bypass the high casting cost or flip cost on the creatures, since he can just put it into play from the graveyard. Till end of turn for three mana. That's mildly interesting to me. Yeah, we might want Feldon depending on how our deck comes out. So, Feldon of the third half. Feldon is one red red. Is a human artificer tooth. Human artificer tooth. Right. Uh, impact resonance no incite rebellion each creature that player controls equal the number of creatures they control trap mastery tyrants familiar destroy target non-basic land deal seven damage to a creature Don't think so don't need warmonger hellkite for anything Reaper Hulk, no. Titania, Vitriol. In your upkeep, put X two twos. X is the number of opponents with four more cards in hand. Don't need Commander Sphere, Crown of Doom. Stable Obelisk. Do I want Flamekin Village? Like, this one is a lot more useful in this deck where my creatures are going to be cheap anyway. So I might actually have the mana left over since it needs up two mana to make my creatures haste. There's a chance I'll run that. So Flamekin... Village. Plus, I might actually have some number of elementals to reveal. So. Alright, so that was Commander 2014. 15. Commander creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and are indestructible. Nope. Uh, beginning of your end step, choose a creature card in the opponent's graveyard, then that player chooses a creature card in your graveyard. You may return those cards to the battlefield under your control. Probably not. Grasp, don't need Herald. Don't need Halim's Captain. Eskos Explorer. Choose three, you may choose the same mode more than once. Put a 2 2 knight with vigilance, exile target enchantment, gain five life. No. Enchant creature. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach shielded by faith. No. Uh, source and opponent controls deals damage to you, sacrifice awaken the tyrant. No. Combat damage to a player, exile that many cards on top of my library. May cast non land cards exiled this way. Don't need fiery confluence. I guess the wheel new. No. It's mastery new. No. Raging storm. War chief giant. 
Genesis, new. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional X11 counters, where X is the number of counters on Bloodspore. Trample Myriad, Centaur Warchief, or not Warchief, Vine Crusher. I don't know where I got Warchief from. I don't see anything else with Warchief in the title. I can't think what Centaur Warchief does now either, so I don't think it's a good enough card that it should have been the first thing that sprung to mind. <clears throat> uh, don't need Predation. Fire player controls get plus two, plus two, and untap them. Think so. Pathbreaker Ibex new. Burden Confluence. Nope. Anya Merciless Angel. Flying. It's plus three plus three for each opponent whose life total is less than half of their starting life total. As long as an opponent's life total is less than half their starting life total, Anya gets indestructible. A double strike vigilance, cast a creature spell with mana value five or greater, get an experience counter. Uh she gets plus one plus one for each experience counter I have. So, no. Don't need the blade of selves. Thought vessel. Alright. That. This brings us to 2016. We're of 2015. And search. Set number. Duelist Heritage. One or more creatures attack. You may have target attacking creature gain double strike. <sighs> Am I at all interested in that? I don't think it's worth a card is the issue. Like, yes, you can also do it on the opponent's turn when they attack one of the other opponents, but I don't think it's actually worth a card to me to bother with Duelist Heritage. Uh, target player sacri sacrifices an attacking creature. I create X-1-1 one, one white soldiers, where X is that creature's toughness. Advocist... Squire. <clears throat> Isolation, no. Case, at the beginning of each player's end step, if no creatures attack this turn, put a Fury counter on charging Cinderhorn, then Cinderhorn deals damage equal to number of Fury counters on it to that player. I think so. Divergent Transformations. Frenzied Fugue. Uh, enters the battlefield, or at the beginning of my upkeep, gain control of Enchanted Permanent until end of turn. On top of that, Permanent gains haste until end of turn. First strike, at the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player creates a 1-1 one, one red goblin token with creatures you control attack each combat if able. Don't need the Hellkite. Benefactor's Draft. Evolutionary Escalation, no. Evil Protector. Uh, don't need Seeds of Renewal. Stonehorn Chieftain. First Strike Vigilance, plus one, plus zero oh for each artifact you control. Uh, enters the battlefield or attacks. Target creature you control gains double strike and lifelink until end of turn. Uh, creatures your opponents control with without flying or reach can't block creatures with power two or less. That's opponents creatures. Okay, I think I misread that as mine the first time. Um, exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. Uh, blood sower. Get that many one ones. Do I want the Conqueror's Flail? Do 
So as long as my commander is out, it's plus three, plus three. And my commander is a two drop, so... That's a pretty reliable bonus even early on. I can't cast spells during my turn. Maybe? Maybe Conqueror's Flail? I uh, don't need Crystalline Crawler, Prismatic Geoscope, or Ash Barons. All right, back we go. Under 2016, Commander 17. If an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw a card. No. Uh, cares about equipment. Uh, each or enchant player is attack gain two life. No, it's usually a non land permanent you don't control. Then each other player chooses a non land permanent they don't control that hasn't been chosen this way. Destroy all other non land permanents. Uh, enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, put a divinity counter on target creature you control of that type. No. Uh, whenever a dragon you control, no. There's a battlefield, choose an opponent, no. Protection. Um, in all permanents you control phase out. So phasing doesn't work like the other things since they don't technically leave the battlefield. They don't come back flipped up. So nefarious protection is not one of the ways to flip all of my face down creatures. For little to no mana. Probably at least a white mana. I don't think I can cast the spell for actual free in this deck. Um, Blood Sworn Steward. I think so. Four damage to them unless they control their commander. Probably not. Curse of Opulence. Disrupt Decorum. Is it Chemster? No. Uh, choose a creature type. Yeah, none of the kindreds are going to be good for us. I don't have enough overlapping creature types. And most of my creatures don't naturally have a creature type until they've been turned face up so i uh, don't need territorial hellkite there's a bounty no hungry links no summons no slingers uh, whenever another cat you control attacks you may pay three you do it gains trample and plus X plus X where X is its power. Uh, Tax each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. As long as Miri Weatherlight Duelist is tapped, no more than one creature can attack me each combat. Uh, enters the battlefield, search my library for an equipment card. No. Bludge Ford Axe. I think I need the hammer either. Those are all things that care about specific creature types and Path of Ancestry. Nope, okay. Here we go. 17, 18. Uh, seven. Uh, leaves the battlefield, choose an opponent, controls more lands than you. Uh, cast a spell, copy it for each time you've cast your commander. Create a 4 4 with flying. Uh, flying double strike enters the battlefield, attach any number of R's and equipment. No. Begin of your combat, if you control your commander, prevent all combat damage will be dealt to creatures you control this turn. Other creatures you control gain vigilance until end of turn. 
is all right. Because it lets me just attack with all of my creatures if I want to. And I do want to be able to attack with the creatures anyway, so maybe the Loyal Unicorn. Green and white for a Unicorn, 3-4. I don't need Magus of Balance. Emissary of Grudges. I think so. Uh, copy it for each time you've cast your commander. Copy target instant or sorcery spell. Nope. Uh, makes it 1 1 Thopter. Nesting Dragon. Reality Scramble. Sahili's Directive. No. Treasure Nabber. No. Our child. Uh, reveal cards on top of your library to reveal a non land permanent card. You put that card onto the battlefield, then put the reveal cards that this way that weren't put in onto the battlefield on the bottom of your library in a random order. I don't need loyal guardian. If unbound, our creature's power, no. A ravenous slime can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. No. Turn timber sower, whip tongue hydra, <clears throat> ancient stone idol, no. No. Nope, okay. Go. So that was 2018. 19. Uh, Vigilance, tap, sacrifice, a target. Permanent you control gains protection from each of your opponents until end of turn. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Uh, sculptures can't attack or block. At the beginning of your end step, create a colorless sculpture artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of sculptures. Uh, don't need mandate of peace. Reclamation, World Soul, no. Cast a spell from your graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one spirit. This thing indestructible. Uh, combat if able. When it attacks, discard my hand, draw three cards. Backdraft, get a Dockside. Lidrin steals X damage providers you choose among any number of target creatures. Whenever a creature dealt damage this way dies this turn, populate. Uh, choose up to two target creatures you don't control. Create a token that's a copy of them. No. Like the future, no. Uh, cast your commander, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. No. Uh, Tax each player who controls the most land, sacrifices two lands. Not choose a player at random. That player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard. Copy that card. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Don't need Altasaur. Flowering. I think I need Frostfang. Uh, return to your permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Put your commander from your hand into your hand from the command zone. Wine 2. Exile target creature card from a graveyard, then populate. 
Uh, draw a card for each opponent who controls fewer creatures than you. Okay, uh, let's see. Two tap, create a zero one one green egg creature token with Defender. Whenever an egg you control dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Hmm, nah. Dies, exile it, and return it to the battle. Return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Enters the battlefield, create a 4 4 green rhino creature token with trample. Never attacks, populate. Token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. Uh, your opponents can't cast spells. During combat, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, go to each creature that player controls. I need Tarngarth, Aeon Engine, no. Bloodthirsty Blade, no. No. There's Scroll of Fate. Tap, manifest a card from your hand. So, yes. drop artifact definitely want that because even if our creatures have morph we still get to put the creature into play for free off of this artifact so kind of hard to say no to that one all right that was 2019 20 Set number. So we're ally colors, so we're like we're shard colors, so we're never gonna get any of the wedge combinations. So we have to go by their individual power, and probably not on any of these individually. Not discarding cards. Creature I control deals combat damage to a player. Put a one-one counter on that creature. Enters the battlefield, exile another creature you control until it leaves the battlefield. When you do, distribute X11 counters among any number of target creatures where X is the exile creature's power. Is this based on its power while it's in exile? We'll still let the ability distribute counter, so it's based on use the power of the creature as it last existed on the battlefield. Yeah, it's I was hoping it was you exile the creature and then you look at it in exile to see how many counters, because that would actually potentially be very strong with what we're doing, but no, it's the other way. Um don't need cryptic trilobite. Avenging hunt bond. Drive. No. <clears throat> uh, deals combat damage to a player who controls more lands than I do. Uh, each opponent destroys up for each opponent destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls, or I can cycle it and destroy all artifacts and enchantments for eight mana. Of course, we want flawless maneuver. Yeah, Flawless Maneuver and Fierce Guardianship are just so dumb. Deflecting Swat is also really strong, but I think I think that's the order for them, is like Fierce Guardianship, Flawless Maneuver, and Deflecting Swat. And I guess Deadly Rollick and the Haze. Um, Herald of the Forgotten is the thing that cares about cycling... Um, as long as an opponent controls more lands, you may play lands from the top of your library. So, no. Uh, lifelink counters. Beginning of your end step, each opponent may put, each player may put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. Go to each creature that had counters put on it this way. 
And yeah, we do want deflecting SWAT. Or we at least want it on the list. Exile another attacking creature. Reveal cards on the top of your library to reveal a creature card. Tapped and attacking. Eh. <clears throat> Tax one or more of your opponents or a planeswalker they control. Those creatures gain menace. I don't need those. Like I need the goat hydra. You create X three threes where X is the number of artifacts that player controls. Blade Muse, Obscuring Haze, that's what it's called. Uh, must be blocked if able and is goaded. Deals X damage and then those creatures deal damage to it. Destroy target non-creature permanence controller creates a three three. Adaption. Don't think I need Bog Bonder. Ornament. Manascape Refractor. Ray Blade. Twinning Staff. And Nesting Ground. Nope. Oh, okay. That was 2020. 21 and I think that's the last one which is good because we're I think this is the last one where they had it by the year release instead of just associating with a set um other artifact creatures is not a thing I really do yeah vigilance sacrifice an artifact gets plus two plus O. Oh. have value X from your graveyard Enters the battlefield, exile two artifacts and or enchantments. Probably not. <clears throat> Again, cares about artifacts. Flying. Player attacks one or more of your opponents. That player creates a tapped inkling. Go to dig site engineer. Destroy target non-land permits. Controller creates two treasure tokens. Uh, enters the battlefield, secretly choose an opponent. You and target permanent, you control each gain protection from the chosen player until end of turn. Activate only once. Attacking artifact creatures. For each player, put a 1 1 count on up to one target creature that player controls. No. Loyalty, no. Scholarship sponsor. Audacious Reshapers, no. It's activated, no. We need triggers. Um, creative Technique, just Mirror, no. Discard your hand, then draw a card when you discard a non-land... Oh, discard a card, not your hand. Then draw a card when you discard a non-land card this way. Fiery Encore deals damage equal to that card's mana value to target creature or player. Creature or planeswalker. Yeah, maybe it would help if I read the actual words on the card. Instead of what my brain wanted the words to be. Uh, and then it has Storm. Uh, enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it. X is the total mana value of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. No. Uh, I don't think I need Layla. Enters the battlefield. If you cast it from your hand, choose target spell that targets only a single. Yeah, we don't need Radiate. Um, create X tokens that are copies of another target creature you control, where X is 1 plus the number of instant sorceries you've cast. Probably not. Melzing Refrain. Ruin Grinder, no. Surge to Victory. Uh, gain two life, then creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X. No. A harness. The, the augmenter. Turn target 
card from your graveyard to your hand, you gain life equal to that card's mana value, exile it. Or exile this, rather. Um, Paradox Zone. No. Pest Infestation, no. Roxa. Enters the battlefield or attacks. Return to our creature card with no abilities from your graveyard to your hand. Creatures you control with no abilities get plus one, plus one. Do morphs have... Morphs have their ability, right? Because... And the other ones definitely do because they have Ward, which is an ability. Yeah, I don't think that works with... Like, I don't think she works with the thing. Because I think they still have their Morph ability. Um, Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to turn them face up. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I don't think that works the way I want it to. Do they have anything about how she works with Morph, just out of curiosity? Oh, wait, face down creatures, many tokens, and creatures that have lost their abilities. So she does work with face down cards. Oops. So. Enters the battlefield or attacks, return to our. Like, we won't get to return anything, but she does give all of my face down cards plus one plus one. They have creatures you control with no abilities assign their combat damage as though they weren't blocked. Hmm. She's not terrible, but at the same time, I'm trying to turn all of my things face up, so she's not going to be giving it plus one, plus one, and the um, Thorn Elemental ability for very long. And that's assuming that nothing happens to her in the meantime. Um, I have value X from your graveyard. No. Trudge. Garden. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may return to the battlefield face down under its owner's control. It's a forest land. So it's face down and a land. I would have to animate it in, and attack with it in order to turn it face up again. I don't know that I would have repeatable ways to animate lands in this deck to begin with, and it only works with her. So... Yeah, I don't think so. If I had another way to bring my cards back to the battlefield as a face-down land... After they die, then if I could use Yodora and something else to do that, then I would probably seriously consider it. But Yodora is only one creature in the deck, and I don't think there's any, like, free enough includes in the deck where I would be able to animate the lands and attack with them. Like, they have to be doing something else I care about, or... um have some other effect yeah yeah they basically have to be doing something else i would care about in addition to being able to randomly animate a land because if i could animate the land and attack with it then i can use um cost to flip it back up into the creature it was and then when it dies it comes back as a land again so that's kind of cool but I don't think it's anywhere near good enough. Don't need the palette. Don't need the nexus. All right. Let's double check, make sure that was the last commander numbered set. Yeah, all the other ones are based on their things. All right. 
So I think that's good enough for me for today. That's a little over two hours worth of streaming total split up among the two VODs. So I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Good rest of your day.